Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, let us worship together all who would seek the Lord today. And many have doubted because Jesus was willing to die on the cross. And the streets were full of those who shouted in the great homes. But today we have eternal life because Jesus died on the cross. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's remain standing our hymn. This is our blue hymn number 367. Christ the Lord is risen today. to welcome everyone to worship on this Easter Sunday. We are glad that you are here to celebrate the risen Christ among us. Um, just a few um, announcements this morning. Buddy, I think you've got something. Thank you. It was a wonderful breakfast. We enjoyed it. Does anyone else have any announcements? Turning our attention then to our prayer list, I um, want to put the family of Marlene Parker, that's uh, Larry Parker's uh, mother who passed away this week. Is there anyone else to lift up in prayer? <coughs> then let us go to God in prayer. Almighty God, as we have come into your house today, we come as people who are full of excitement, people who are feeling the resurrection, people who have seen the empty tomb and are filled with hope. As we come into your house of worship today, we ask, O oh God, that you would bless us, your people. As we commune this day, 
We ask to feel the mystical presence of your Son in these elements. We ask that the Holy Spirit would come upon us as we worship you. And we praise your glorious name for all that you've done when you created this world, when you created humankind, when you gave us a Savior. We praise and glorify your holy name today. Help us, O oh God, to be focused on the resurrection and live as people with Easter in our hearts each and every day. For we are your people, O oh God. Help us this day to be filled with your Holy Spirit. We thank you so much for the fellowship that we feel, the warmth, and ask that you bless us. And now we pray as Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And we give us our temptation, but deliver us from evil, for our is the kingdom, the power, Thank you. 
brothers and sisters who are God's people, let us join together in confessing our sins. Lord, so often, like the crowds of Jerusalem, we come to praise. One day, but before a week is past, we have through our personal actions, through jealousy,
Our epistle lesson today comes from the third chapter of Colossians, the first through the fourth verses. Since then you've been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with Him in glory. Sanctify us through your words. Your words are truth, O Lord. Join with me now as we confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Son of our Lord, who is overseen by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again. gifts of our tithes and offerings. We ask that you use these gifts 
that you multiply them for the upbuilding of this church and for your kingdom upon this earth. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. A reading from John's Gospel, the 20th chapter, the 1st through the 18th verses. Early on, the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciples outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over, looked at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then when the disciples went back to where they were staying, now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over and looked into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head, the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The word of God for the people of God. You may be seated.
the gospel today is John's account of the resurrection. Starts with the empty tomb. And to me, this is one of the very personal moments of the gospel. Things start falling to place in this moment. The stuff that has been foreshadowed for some time with Jesus' preaching and teaching is now coming together with his resurrection. Yet, even these that are closest to him did not quite realize what is happening. I want to start at the end and work backwards today with this particular scripture. Mary, of course, has been alongside Jesus for much of this time. And upon reaching the tomb, Mary Magdalene thinks someone has stolen his body. And not yet realizing that it is Jesus himself, she thinks he is the gardener and asks where is his body. And what does Jesus respond with? He calls her by name. He only says, Mary. And she realizes in that moment that it is Jesus. And it says she responds in Aramaic with Rabboni, which means teacher, because she realizes that everything has come to fruition. And as we stand and sit and sing and worship today, we are people that the story has come together. The loose threads have been tied into a perfect knot that shows us what we as humanity need in the Savior of Jesus Christ. If you read the whole Bible start to finish, it gives you great insights into human nature. While much has changed since the day that the Bible was first written, human nature has changed very little over the years. And how the people would rebel against God. And he gives them these laws. And they don't follow the laws. But yet God still cares so much about his creation that he sends his very best. He sends his one and only Son so that humanity might have eternal life. Think about it, of the good gifts. You know, how often do we give the best? Yet, through the Old Testament, there is this of giving the first fruits. The very first of the harvest went back to God. And yet, the same is seen of God. When He gives of us, He gives His very best and gives His Son that we might have eternal life. And so when we come to the empty tomb, it fills us with joy. It's such a, to me, an interesting thing. How the emptiness actually fills us. The emptiness of the tomb is what fills our hearts and minds because Jesus' body is no longer there. And so she went. And she shared the good news to the disciples. Don't we, when something good happens to us, want to share it? Don't we want others to know our good news and rejoice with us? How often do we share the good news of the gospel? How often do we let others know how powerful the God is that we serve? Today we will commune on this Easter Sunday and we experience the mystical presence of Jesus Christ in these elements. For Christ is with us hand in hand through our good times and dark times. You know, I've talked, um, I've said this to numerous people over the last few days. But as you go through the Lenten journey, you have the high of Palm Sunday. Then you have Monday, Thursday with the Last Supper, a very tense moment that ends with Jesus' uh, arrest 
in the garden, and then you have his trial, and then his execution, of course, and his death upon the cross. But it seems like this particular weekend, the weather has been so dreary. And to me, it is, it's kind of been a sort of gone along with the Bible in this respect. And yet, on this Easter Sunday, we have beautiful weather and sunshine. It's as if God is illuminating the empty tomb for us today so that we can reflect and realize that His light is shining through. And no matter the darkest days or the darkest clouds that surround us, we are people who live in the light of Christ. We are people who have seen that empty tomb. Does it mean that we understand all of it? Of course not. Do we understand all the ways that God works in our lives? Of course not. How can we, with our humanity, know the mind of God? How can we know the depths of it all? But what we do know we can understand and that it is His love that transcends to us, so that we find this empty tomb and take joy from it. Because we have seen the Lord. We are people who know the stories. We know the scriptures. We know that Christ is with God. And so we are people that must rejoice in that and take hope in that and know that our God is with us in all of these things. Why I've often wondered, did Mary go to the tomb by herself? Maybe she didn't think of the heavy stone. Maybe she wanted time alone before the others got there. But for whatever reason, these accounts list that this woman went by herself, was the first one, and instead of finding the tomb sealed as it should have been, she found it completely open, the stone rolled away. It was not what she or any of the other disciples had expected, yet that was what happened. And they wondered at first, where his body had gone. Because it says, while they believed, they still did not understand. And maybe at times we're in that same way, where we believe, but don't understand. And we should never let our lack of understanding keep us from belief. Because at the end of the day, it is God who is in control and in our lives, who has created humankind in his image. On this Easter Sunday, let's leave behind some things at the tomb. See, Christ wants us to go into the world, wants the good news to flourish. But let's leave behind the things that are keeping us from God and feel the emptiness within us with Christ. Have you ever met people who are never satisfied with anything? Maybe you look at their lives and think, boy, they've got it made. But yet, to get to know them, you see that it's not quite as rosy as you thought it might. Because there's an emptiness that no possessions can feel. And imagine the emptiness of these disciples and Mary Magdalene and the different people who followed alongside of him and how from the moment that everything seemed over and completely ended, they've then seen the Lord and it has renewed their faith and their energy and caused everything to start over afresh. 
And so as we go forth as Christians into the world, let us leave the past behind and let us go forth as people who have seen the Lord, people who have looked into the eyes of Christ and know that his mystical presence dwells in this house of worship and in our hearts and minds. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for these scriptures, the comfort they bring to us and the fact that they challenge us. Help us that we might serve you as best as we're able. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray, amen. Please join with me in your bulletin for our service of Holy Communion. Let us join together in confessing our faith using the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, begotten from the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. God on our way of the same essence as the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven to be attained in our by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made human. He was crucified for us under the cross of Father. He suffered and was buried. But most of all, praise thee for the Father everlasting, for the gift of thine Holy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who thereby is appeared, hath abolished death and brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. We bless thee for his holy incarnation, for his life on the earth, for his precious suffering and death upon the cross, for his resurrection from the dead, and for his glorious ascension to thy right hand. We bless thee for the Holy Spirit, for the institution of the church, for the means of grace, and for the hope of everlasting life, and for the glory which shall come to be brought to us in the coming of the kingdom of thy dear Son. The mighty God, heavenly King, we magnify and praise. With the patriarchs and prophets, the apostles and martyrs, with the holy church throughout the world, with the heavenly Jerusalem and the joyful assembly of the congregation of the firstborn on high, with the innumerable company of angels in all the heavens of heavens, in all our power of singing, we worship and adore thy glorious name, joining in the song of the cherub.
For this is my body broken for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took into his hand, hands the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore we ask you, most merciful Father, to send thy spirit upon these gifts, these elements of the bread and the cup, that the bread and the wine which we break may be to us the communion of the body of Christ, and the cup of blessings which we bless, the communion of the blood of Christ. And if it be, please now, most merciful Father, to receive the memorial blessed sacrifice of your Son, which we offer in union with the sacrifices of ourselves, thanksgiving and praise, consecrating ourselves, soul and body, property and life, to thy most blessed service. Look upon us through the meditation of our great high priest. Make us accepted in the beloved, and let his name be as pure and holy incense through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that taketh away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O Christ, the Lamb of God, that taketh away the sin of the world. Pray for peace among you. Come unto me now, all who are heavy laden, and I will give you grace.
for our Thanksgiving prayer. <coughs> Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gift of our Savior's presence in the simplicity and holy splendor of this holy meal. Unite us with all who are faithful our Christ's body and blood, that we may faithfully proclaim the good news of your love and enter the universal church and may be a healing of the answers of the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Let us remain standing for our final hymn, number 368.